Okay, Anthony Priscilla here doing some probability with my statistics course. Um, multiple choice questions each have four possible answers, one of which is correct. So A, B, C, D, only one right answer. Assume that you guess the answers to three such questions. Use the multiplication rule to find the probability of wrong WCC, this is where C stands for correct and W stands for wrong. Well, first of all, if A, B, C, D are your choices and there's only one right, the probability of being correct would be uh, one out of four. The probability of guessing a wrong answer would be three out of four. So the probability of wrong, correct, correct, that would be three-fourths times one-fourth times one-fourth. Or if we want to do this as a decimal, I guess maybe that would be better, 0 0.75 times 0 0.25 times 0.25. Patching that into, well, again, the calculator isn't showing much. 0.75 times 0.25 times 0.25. That's going to be a 0 0.046875. 0 0.046875. Now, beginning with wrong, correct, correct, the one we just did, make a complete list of different possible arrangements of two correct and one wrong. See, the first one you might get wrong, or the last one, or the middle one. But, no matter what, you're still multiplying 2.25s and one, uh, point, uh, point seven five. So no matter what, you're still getting 0 0.046875 for each of these. Now, based on the preceding result, what's the probability of getting exactly two correct answers when three guesses are made? Well, the probability of getting uh, the first one wrong followed by the next two right is 0 0.046875. That's also the probability of getting the last one wrong, but the first two right. And that's also the probability of getting the middle one wrong, the first and third right. So to calculate what's the probability of exhibiting exactly two correct, you just add up these three numbers, or I guess we could just multiply by three. So I'm going to point zero four six eight seven five plus point zero four six eight seven five plus point zero four six eight seven five or just multiply by three and that'll be a point one four zero six two five okay so um, this is only uh, if you have three problems multiple choice and you're just guessing it's not too great a likelihood that you'll get one wrong and exactly two of them right. Well, 14%. Now, problem number eight. Oh, move that too high. What's number eight say? A pharmaceutical company receives a large ship of aspirin tablets. The acceptance sampling plan is to randomly select and test 19 tablets. Then accept the batch if there's only one or none that don't meet the required specification. If a particular ship, shipment of thousands of aspirin tablets actually has a 4% rate of defect, what's the probability the whole shipment will be accepted? Well, this is a binomial probability. They're going to choose uh, 19 tablets and test them. They're either defective or they're not defective. 
So let's say the probability of X successes out of N trials is the number of combinations of N items taken X at a time times the probability of uh, success raised to the X power times the probability of failure raised to the N minus X power. Here would make more sense if we use some numbers. N is 19. They have 19 tablets. The probability of a defect, let's say defect, the probability of getting a defective aspirin tablet is 4%, so 0.04. The probability of not being defective then would be 1 minus 0.04 or 0.96. We want them, they're going to reject the shipment if they get more than one defect. Accept the whole batch if there's only one or none. So they're going to accept the shipment if there's zero defects or one defect. So let's find the probability of zero defects and then we'll add that to the probability of just one defect one of the 19 aspirin being defective. So to spreading it out because I'm going to uh, write some right out here. Okay, so NCX, that would be the number of ways you could choose uh, zero of the 19 items well, that's pretty easy. We can do that in your head. If you have 19 aspirin, how many ways could you choose zero of them? Well, there's only one way. You just choose none of them. Times P, 0 0.04, to the X, X is zero. Q to the N minus X, 19 minus zero, 19. So we're going to have to punch all of that into our calculator. Plus, do the same thing with the probability of 1. That would be 19 NCR1 times 0 0.04. It's the probability of defects raised to the number of defects. The probability of not defective raised to the number of not defective. So there'd be one defective aspirin, 18 that aren't. Well, uh, you could do this in your, uh, some of this in your head. 0 0.4, 0 0.04 to the zero power would just be a one. How many ways could, ch could you choose zero of 19 items? It's just one way to do that. How many ways could you choose one of 19 items? Well, there's 19 of those. Now, if you want to use your calculator on that, let me see if I can, how does my calculator, how's it showing? Uh, not great, is it? Um, let me move it down a little. Mm -hmm. If I move it over, right up there. Oh, there's still a big bit of a glare or something. Okay, well, anyway. To put in that 19 NCR0, if you didn't want to just do it in your head, and it's certainly one that you can sort of think your way through, you click math, probability. This room I'm in has a motion sensor on the lights and cuts it off after a few minutes. I'm not moving enough. See, the 19 NCR0 is a 1. Let me see. If I did the 19 math probability, oops, clear, 19 math probability, oh, I did it again. 19 math probability NCR 1, that's 19, okay, so I'll patch in 
point nine point nine six raised to the nineteenth plus nineteen times point zero four to the first is just point zero four times point nine six raised to the eighteenth power. And we're getting point eight two and the instructions here said round it to three decimal places. So point eight two five would be your answer there. Okay. So you need to practice using that math. When you hit math, move over to probability, and that's where you have your factorial key, NCR, and NPR key. Okay?